Hi, my name is Angus Ho with Daddy Debt, a part of the Ash Management Group. I want to show how you can budget as a full-time engineer, make real estate investments, and live an exceptional family life as a dad. So come along with me in this journey of wealth. Choices, choices, choices. The more choices there are, the more confusing things get. So, in this video, I want to talk about the differences between a tax-free savings account, or a TFSA, and a Registered Retirement Savings Account, or a RRSP. Both of these accounts are only available in Canada, but there is a United States equivalent account, which are for the TFSA and Roth IRA, and for the RRSP, it's a 401k. Both of these accounts have slightly different rules, but are very similar in terms of investment style and how to use them. Each country, whether in Europe or Australia, will also have their own kind, named differently, but will be the same idea. Since I live in Canada, I will focus more on the TFSA and the RRSP accounts, and briefly go over the United States counterparts for contrast and comparison. These accounts are so important as they are part of the S of the ASH method. By opening one of these accounts, you will be able to reach that dream goal of yours faster. Whatever it may be, that dream house of yours, travel the world in style, financial independence, and retire early. First, very quickly, the pros of a Roth IRA. One, all the profit is tax-free after 59 and a half years old. Number two, you can withdraw contributions. Now, the cons of the Roth IRA. One, post-tax money, there is no tax write-off. Two, if you withdraw profit, 10% penalty and you have to pay taxes. Three, it is limited to $6,000 per year. So, now very quickly, the pros of a traditional 401k. First, there is a tax write-off. Second, you can contribute $19,000 per year. The cons of a traditional 401k, however, is one, you pay taxes later after 59 and a half years old. Two, if you withdraw any money early, a 10% penalty will apply and you have to pay income taxes. Three, you are forced to withdraw at 70 and a half years old. Now, let's go deeper into the Canadian counterparts, that being the TFSA and the RRSPs. Before we get started, I need your help again to fend off those dislike trolls. Yes, it would be very helpful if you can smash that like button now before they get here. Oh my god, they're here! Hurry, smash that like button! They're getting closer! They're getting closer! Ah! Alright, I hope you hit that like button to help me fight them off. If you did, it's very appreciated and thanks for helping out. Now, let's start with the pros of a TFSA. The TFSA is, is exactly as it says. Any profit that you make from this account is tax-free. So all interest that you make from investing will be tax-free when you withdraw from this account. Currently, in a TFSA, all profits are tax-free immediately and without restrictions. Also, within a TFSA, you are allowed to withdraw your contributions. However, once withdrawn, you're not allowed to re-contribute it back until the next calendar year. The amount that you will be putting money into has no tax write-off, unfortunately. That means that you'll be putting money after taxes has been paid off on it or if you contribute to this account, there will be no tax deduction later on. This drawback is exactly the same as a Roth IRA. There is no withdrawal penalty with a TFSA. It's exactly like a savings account with a contribution limit. Speaking about the contribution limit, a TFSA has varying contribution limits since its inception. Each year, the government decides what this amount is and it is super confusing with no rhyme or rhythm. So, if you turned 18 before 2009, 
you have the full amount available to you. Then, depending on the year you turn 18, your contribution amount will start at that amount. This is practically the tax-free savings account. Let's start talking about the RRSP now. The benefits of an RRSP is that there are no tax deduction on the amount you contribute. So, let's say you are in the 30% tax bracket, you can put $10,000 into an RRSP and then you will get $3,000 back in income taxes. The contribution limit is a little bit more convoluted for an RRSP. You will be allowed to contribute 18% of your earned income up to a maximum amount determined by the Government of Canada. Historically, these are the maximum amounts for previous years. A RRSP reaches maturity at the age of 71. That means that you can no longer contribute to an RRSP and you must start withdrawing from the RRSP. This also means that the amount you withdraw will be taxed as regular income. There are those that don't retire at 71 or they don't want to withdraw from the RRSP just yet because their pension or because much of the RRSP is held in stocks that they don't want to sell yet. There is an option to transfer that amount to a registered retirement income fund or a REF, where the rules are a little different for cases like these. I don't really want to get into too much detail about these kinds of accounts in this video. If you were to withdraw early from an RRSP, there is a tiered withholding tax that you must pay. 10% for the first $5,000, 20% for the next $5,000 to $15,000, and 30% for everything above $15,000. There are, however, reasons that you are allowed to pull out of an RRSP, including the first-time homebuyers plan, the lifelong learning plan, and very specific emergencies. These amounts that you withdraw from has a maximum that you can pull out, and you must pay it back within the specified plan. So, you must be thinking, when should you use one or the other, and how would I use it? Well, currently, there are two approaches for me. The first approach is always max out your TFSA first. Then, if necessary, put it into an RRSP since your RRSP contribution will never disappear and any unused amount will carry over to the next year. Only contribute, it to, only contribute to it when you reach the next tax bracket. For example, if you made $100,000 this year, then I would put $2,931 into the RRSP to put you under the 26% tax bracket. You would save 5.5% taxes on $2,931. This amount is small, like $161, but it is still an amount that you would get back so that you can invest it into a stock or something else. The second approach is that you put as much as you can into the RRSP and any tax return you get, you put it into a tax-free savings account. The first approach is definitely the way I would go. It is so important to use these accounts to strategically plan your future. You will be better off applying these principles now and save that little bit than if you were the neighbor that didn't do anything at all. The question I would ask is, which neighbor are you? Anybody can do it. If an everyday dad who budgets and works hard as an engineer to stay out of debt can do it, then so can you. By doing it properly, you can strategically invest your savings into the real estate and the stock market and become like me, who now runs a side company that manages over $3 million in properties. Because of that, I can travel the world with my wife every year and live in a 2,000 square feet house. Now, I'm 90% plus of the way there to becoming a millionaire. I hope I gave you guys lots to think about on how to invest more strategically and intelligently. Join me in the Daddy Debt Facebook group to talk about your finance questions. 
Ask the YouTube community your questions by commenting below. If you like to hear more budgeting, engineering, or real estate tips, please leave a comment for what you want to hear, smash that like button, subscribe button, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I post new videos every week on Sundays. From the Ash Management Group, this is Daddy Dad, saving you money.